Last week, we talked about uh, Jesus, about hearing his voice. You all remember how we hear the shepherd's voice and how it guides us. And we talked about committing to the path of love because that's what we do when we are in his consciousness. We're committing to the path that he brought to the planet, which is that of following love, unconditional. And, you know, we went through the parameters that he set forth. God is father. Everybody's our brother. Not everybody's on the path we're on, but they're on a perfect path for them. Remember all of that? And when we follow the path of the Christ, we can hear his voice. We know the difference. So I hope you were able to process that this week. Um, So it is a very real and active relationship that we have. So I wanted to start out by bringing your attention to the disciples. He, uh, in his journey with them, according to what we read in the Aquarian, he worked with them for about a year or so, and then he sent them out. And he sent them out two by two. And he sent them out with the ability to heal, to talk, to read, to do everything he did. Do you realize that? So he was preparing them for them to stand forth in the energy without always relying on his physical presence. He was preparing them to actually do what he did. He, they were empowered. They had the word. They could do the healings. You guys are remembering all this? So it was like, don't just follow me and make me do your work. You grow to be that healer, that, that person, that light on the planet. Do as I do. So as they went, they walked in his consciousness, but do you not think that they had their own awarenesses? Don't you think that one of them might have gotten a little upset about somebody not listening and had to deal with their personality, or somebody else might have said, well, I'm hungry, I'm afraid we won't find food. You know, personality gets, comes up when we're trying to walk that path of love, right? So don't you think of the 12, they all had a quite variety, a, quite a variety of experiences in healing their personal perspectives of Mother Earth and of people, right? So each had their own awareness. And after Jesus was gone, after he ascended, A lot of the disciples stayed in the Jerusalem area, but we know Thomas traveled. Thomas went out into Asia. Philip was out. Philip was all over Turkey. There, a lot of them actually went out and started teaching and healing and doing what Jesus did by themselves. So they were following a unique path. That's what I want you to see. Some were supposed to stay in Jerusalem and hold the fort there. Some were supposed to go out. But was there a leader of the group that said, okay, now... You're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do this. No. It was the individual guidance of each to take the path that was theirs to take. And I know from the hub, when Philip left, they went, hmm, Philip, Turkey? (laughs) I don't know. It wasn't called Turkey at the time, I'm sure. But do you know what I'm saying? I'm sure it wasn't with great support and enthusiasm. It was like, are you sure you know what you're doing? But they were following that individual light within their heart. So that's what I want to get us to today. When we talk about becoming one with God, because what is our our topic today is I know my voice. Last week it was I know his voice. I know Jesus' voice. When we do our meditations and we connect with God, Father, Mother, God, Creator, is there not an expanded oneness? And do we not get counsel? We get counsel, we get love, we get fed. It's an expanded oneness. And sometimes the downloads have no words. We get downloads that are not that are wordless, but they're energy. You know what I'm saying? And then when we connect with Jesus in our meditations, we feel the love, we feel the expanded consciousness, and we feel the counsel. He will speak to us. He'll speak to us, right? But guidance comes from within us. Guidance comes from within us. Guidance is that space within our heart where our consciousness, our Christ, our higher self speaks. I know we spoke last week about the higher self moving through the lower self and the bodies. Remember, that was one of the tenets. Okay. When the higher self, which is our spirit, is present within us, there is a knowing at a causal level of your next step. When the 
lower self or the carnal self is dominant. There is a human perspective that is based on the past and based on what I can see in the other world. I'm hungry. Okay, what's in the fridge? What's in the cupboard? Where's the grocery store? You know, my human nature. I'm hungry, my spiritual nature. I can go as I'm hungry. Spirit might say, you know what? Just stand by. Someone's going to ask you to lunch. I would have no, that would not even be in my awareness, would it? In my human nature. Do you see? So the spirit in you has you. The human in you, the lower of you, looks only to what it knows in the outer material world. And in order for me to hear my voice, the carnal human physical self in me has to become receptive to my spirit. How often do we get guidance and we go, oh, no, 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 no. And we argue with it, you know. And then the universe gets involved and hits us upside the head with the two by four. But the guidance first comes from the still, small voice in your own heart, your spirit speaking to you. Come on, it's time. Come on, it's time. Oh, it's not time. It's time, you know. That's when it begins. So my voice is my Christ in me. And I can say, Father, your will be done. Your will be done. I can feel the love of Father, Mother, God. But that very next step comes from here. Okay, this is your first step. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your will be done. Okay, you're going to be fabulous, amazing. This wonderful dream you have is going to manifest. Are you there yet? Can you even embody it yet? No. What's my first step? Talk to me, my higher self, okay? We know where I'm going. What's my first step to get there? And that's where we get that guidance. Are you guys with me so far? All right. We have to focus on our heart. Is this for my highest good? We talk about that all the time. Is this for my highest good? Last week we said, when the spirit self becomes the guide to life here, instead of the lower physical survival material self, you are bringing your true God self into life here. The Christ will be fully expressing in you. Are we here just to heal? If the Christ is fully expressing within us, are we here just to heal? Are we here just to go on the missionary missions like the disciples? Are we here to wake people up? Are we here to just do that? We are here to be. And if we're going to be, we're going to be like our creator. And let's think about the word creator. We call God, Father, Mother, God, our creator. Therefore, that makes us creative. We're here to create. We're here to create. We're here to express in beautiful, fabulous, wonderful ways. Creating. So, we are here to be more than just a healed version of ourselves. We're here to open the door to see who we truly are. When I was meditating, I asked, I, when I was meditating about the service, I saw Jesus, and I, he lifted me up, and he was very visible, very tactile. And this is what he said. Ready? And I wrote it down. Teach them, you guys, self-love. Teach them the value of the intrinsic the value that is intrinsic in their souls. The value that is intrinsic in their souls. Comfort them. We know how hard it is to be in a time where even the winds are shifting. The great test. Hold tight to love. You are the lights that light the world. Remember you made the choice to be here. There is true value in your soul. Let it shine. And I had to look up the word intrinsic. The value intrinsic in your souls. This means that it is an innate, undividable, indivisible part of you. There is something unique, precious, and wonderful about you, about your soul, about who you are, that I am not. There's wonderful with me that I am, and I love who I am, you know? But there is wonderful within you that is unique to you, your experiences, who you are, how you were created. Do you understand? So how valuable is it that you are here breathing and sending light to the world? 
Yes. So the uniqueness is your contribution to this visible, material-ish world that we live in, this reality that we live in. When I say to you, your soul has value specific to you, do you understand? Okay. Like some of us are wired to music. It doesn't matter where we are. That's who we are. Some of us are to the stars. Some of us are to specific things, creation. It's so beautiful. And we, sh- we all are not limited to that one thing. But if we look at the one thing that we are strong in, it can give us that access code to who we are. So in your world, in who you are, you are very valued. And if you can follow your heart, then you can begin to share that value with the world. And when he said, did did it upset you when it said comfort them? We know how hard it is to be in a time when even the winds are shifting. When I was young, I heard about the Native Americans in Georgia area, and they built houses. They didn't live in teepees. They had houses. They would never build within a mile of a river. Why? They knew the river would change its course. It always did. It's part of Mother Earth. And we're in a time when we're building on the river and we're changing its course too. We're saying, how close can we take that risk? This is the time we're in. It's not a time of allowing. It's a time of pushing the boundaries. So that's what he was talking about. Even the winds are shifting. We're pushing our boundaries as a people. But those that have the light can shine. And as you shine, you affect everything. And we can come back into harmony with all the life around us. So our job was to hold the light. In metaphysics, one of the very first things that, well, one of the very first things I experienced, so I had been exposed to a lot of metaphysical thought, but I started coming to a church when I was very young, 30. And um, people would say to me, have you felt your heart chakra open? I'm like, I have not a clue what you're talking about. (laughs) Then they they said, you'll know it when it happens. Um, I think I had felt it before, as we all do, but my awareness of the energy was not there to recognize it. When your heart chakra opens, there is a flow in the heart center that is warm and big. It feels like it's expanding. (sighs) right? And sometimes it opens when you're looking at a child or at Christmas, but you can literally feel it opening. When you are aware of that, just that one little step of awareness, it lets you become aware of the power of your presence in your heart. The power of your presence in your heart. Y'all, we talked about last week bringing the heart, the Christ, into the lower frequency, the humanness of us. Metaphysically, we are taught that when we're born, the higher self, the spirit of us, enters through the crown chakra, anchors in the root, and then it gives us life. It animates us. But we know, we've had moments when we experience great love for the world with our heart. We're just loving the world. And then we'll go into an emotional state, another chakra, when someone cuts us off or someone doesn't do what we need them to do, and we might snap at them. The same person who loved the world moments before is snapping at someone, taking their head off, being unkind, right? And these are metaphysical Christians. We do this. We do this because the light of the Christ has not yet permeated our need in our emotional body. Our emotional body needs to to make them do something. But the light of the Christ in my heart has not yet moved to that emotional body to heal it, to let it let go. So we are ever on the journey of letting the heart, that open flow, move through every aspect of our natures, our personalities, our discipleship, just like the disciples, purifying your personality, purifying that human self so that the love moves first. You with me? Now, I could take an inventory of everybody in this room and anyone that's going to hear my words, and every one of us would say, yes, this last week I did, in fact, not let love lead me in that moment. (laughs) We all do it. 
We all do it. And, and when we're in it, we go, well, I'm justified. Well, I'm justified. Well, I'm justified. My mind says I'm justified. I, sh- I should be okay doing that. But we didn't go to the heart. We didn't say, what should I do here? What's mine to do here? Who am I in this? What am I to do? And even if we need to take a stand, if the heart says take a stand, the heart gives you words that are comforting, words that are life-giving, not words that are conflicting and combative. Do you see the difference? That is the journey that we have in Christing, but it begins with the heart center. In the crown, the purpose, why you came is here. In the heart is the key of why you came. You chose to be here in this moment. You brought something beautiful to give. It is your gift to the planet and to yourself. Your heart has the key to knowing what is for your highest and best in this next step. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. The mind and the heart, the intention of the path of love is of Jesus. The intention of becoming and expressing the Christ is the heart. The heart needs the next step. I wanted to share a small example for maybe you to understand easier. Because what I'm trying to delineate for us all is God... Jesus Christ self. Spirit will speak to me. Spirit, God says to me, will you be a minister? My human self says, oh, knocking knees, I don't know what you're saying. You know? I go to my heart, and my heart says, yes. And I say, God, yes. And then I say, God, next step. Heart next step. I have to go here for my next step. What's my next step? Do you hear me? So as a minister, I've agreed to do this Sunday service. So heart said, do it. Cindy, human, sits down and goes, what do I do? (laughs) I go. Heart says, do it. I access the divine. Tell me what to do. The download from the divine comes through the human heart and out. Do you understand? But if I had not said yes in the first place to to take this role, I wouldn't be here. And if I did not say what's my next step to access information, I couldn't get it. Okay. So it really is, even when we know your answers are here, your next step is here, the divine has you. The divine has you. If you need access to the divine, you have it through the heart. You have it through the heart. When I will ask God tomorrow, what is my next step for the day? It says, go to your heart. Because the next step for the day is going to be me dealing with human challenges. Not being a channel for the world. That's what I want you to see. Me dealing with human channel, the human challenges of Cindy's nature needing to be perfected. Got it? In Life and Teachings, it says, When man listens to the inner voice, he will cease to labor for the means of living. He will work for the joy of creating. And that's in Life and Teachings. What is my next step opens my heart. Have you noticed that when we teach you in meditation, we teach you to go within, let everything go, don't even think, feel the energy. You don't have to even have words to it. Feel the energy, come back, and write down, what did I learn in this meditation? Now the energy is going through your mind and your heart, and you can say to my heart, what is my next step after the meditation, and journal. And all the information comes out because it's coming through a different channel than when you meditated and went into this great space of connection. Do you see how valuable your voice is? Hearing my voice in my heart for guidance. Hearing what is mine to do, what is not mine to do. And it starts with the little things. It starts with the little things. And you know, our heart can only tell us what we're willing to see, what we're ready to see. You know, I have been asking for 100 years, what do I need to heal within myself? What do I need to heal within myself? And I get glimmers and pieces of the issue, 
But until I'm ready to see it, then I see it. Then my heart can reveal it because my human is ready to see it. But the divine has given me the glimmers all along. This is what you need to work on. This is where you're getting tripped up. Do you understand? So all the things that you think are coming to you are. You get the next step here. If the dream is too big, what's my next step? If the challenge is too big, what's my next step? If I need to do something, what's my next step? And it comes here. Well, that is very simple, and that is your message for today. So I hope that um, you can feel God energy, Jesus energy, and your energy, your heart, and feel divinity, divinity, and divinity. You are the child of God. All right, let's go within and anchor this. Just breathe. Father, Mother, God, we ask that your infinite love just engulf us all. And I ask that a beautiful column of light come over each one who hears my words. And just relax and begin to visualize that column of light. Notice the color. Notice the patterns, if there's patterns in the movement. Just be in it for a moment, breathe it in. I am safe in the heart of God. But who am I? In this column of light, allow your focus just to go to the heart center in the middle of your chest. And you may feel an opening or a star or a light. Whatever you see is perfect. I want you to send conscious love to what you see. Conscious love to that whatever it is in your chest. With my mind and my human nature, I choose to love the higher self within me. With my mind and who I am as human, I choose to love the Christ in my heart. And feel the space opening, expanding, receiving. And you may feel yourself being invited in. Whatever happens, just allow the connection to occur. If you go within the heart, if you stay outside, allow the connection to occur. And just feel a clarity. You may sense all of your life swirling around you, but feel a clarity as you connect. I know I am one with God. What is my next step in my soul journey? I am open to hear. Just breathe. Whatever you got is perfect. You may see a visual. You may have heard words. You may just have a feeling. Whatever you got is perfect. Maybe it's not time to hear. But the fact that you have asked opens the channel. Send love once again to that heart center, to that divinity. I am this divinity. I am this divinity. This divinity is me. And imagine that your human nature just begins to step inside and become one with that beautiful light. I am the Christ. And feel the light pouring through your body.
Father, Mother, God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your love that guides us and for the peace. We thank you for our oneness with you. Feel your heart chakras. Feel the light. We thank you, God. And so it is. Take a breath. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. I know it seems odd to talk to yourself, but sometimes we need to. Sometimes our human self forgets our divine self. But did it not feel good to become one? to step back in and let it all become one again. And then when we open our eyes, we are on point instead of in confusion. So I behold the Christ in each one of you, and I know you will follow your heart this week, for that is your homework. And so it is.